Number 53. Perform the following calculations and report each answer with the correct number of significant figures. And I see that I have A through F. So like always, let's just list them out. A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay. So now we're doing something new here. We're doing multiplication, division, addition, and no subtraction here, but it follows the same rules of sig figs, scientific figures. So quick rules. If you're multiplying or dividing, your total answer will have the least number of sig figs that you see in the problem. So it's the least total, I'll say, least total. If you're adding or subtracting, your answer will have the least sig figs, significant figures, after the decimal. So to the right of the decimal. So if here is the decimal right here, you're only looking at the sig figs that are after the decimal to the right of the decimal. So that's the difference between multiplying, dividing, and addition and subtraction rules. For multiplying and dividing, you take the least total out of what you were working with. With addition and subtraction, you take the least after or to the right of the decimal. So let's try this out. I'm going to say 628 times 342. Now, let's first put this into the calculator, and then we will say how many sig figs we need. So I'm just going to go to the calculator and say 628 times 342. And I get this big number, so I'll write the full number. So if I did this in the calculator, I get 214 776. So 214,776. But now we need to round with the correct number of sig figs. So we have to take how many sig figs are in the components that we were multiplying. So for the first number, 626, how many sig figs are here? Well, all non-zeros are significant, so they all count. So this had three sig figs. And how many sig figs were in 342? One, two, three. They're all non-zeros, so they count as well. So since we are multiplying, the answer should have the least sig figs. So since both of these had three, and there's no other lower number than three, my answer should have only three significant figures, or three sig figs. So now we just have to round appropriately. If you don't know how to round, check back at our last question, number uh, 52, and also 51. We do rounding there. So here, just for more practice, I guess, right? So here, our first sig figs are the 2, 1, and the 4. The next number will tell me if I can round up the 4 or not. This 7 is greater than 5. And remember those rounding rules. So to round, 5 and above, round up. Four and below, keep number. So since this is a seven, it's five and above, this four would turn into a five. So it would be two, one, five. Now these do not count anymore for scientific notate or sig figs, right? Significant figures, but you do need placeholders for these because the decimal is all the way at the end. So I need to put a placeholder, and placeholders are always zero. So it'd be zero, zero, zero. And there are my three sig figs. Now, if you wanted to put this into scientific notation, remember, the decimal has to now be here. So here's my decimal, right? One, two, three, four, five. So it would be, I'll put it over here, 2.15 times 10 to the fifth. And it's a positive because this number is greater than one. So either one is acceptable. When you start getting into really, really big numbers, though, it's preferable that you put it into scientific notation. So let's just get the habit of that. Scientific notation. Notation. Okay. So that's the answer for number one. 2.5 times 10 to the fifth. 
Let's go to B now. So now we have 5.63 times 10 to the second times 7.4 times 10 to the third. Now remember, the times 10 to these do not count for sig figs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into the calculator, write the full answer, and then we will round appropriately. So 5.63 times 10 to the second times 7.4 times 10 to the third. And I get this big number, 4166200. So 4166200. It's multiplication. So we take the least total. How many sig figs were in this number? Five, six, and three. So there was three here. How many sig figs were in this number? Only two, the seven and the four. With multiplication and division, you take the least sig figs. Now here, two is less than three, so I will take two as my answer. So in my answer, I can only have two sig figs. So... I will take the 4, I will take the 1, and the next number will tell me if I round. It's greater than 5, so therefore this would become a 2. So my answer is 4, 2, and now I just need placeholders because remember the decimal's all the way over here. So I have, looks like 5 placeholders for this, 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 and this. One, two, three, four, five. It's a big number, so I'm going to put it in scientific notation. So the decimal should be here when you do that. So it would be 4.2 times 10 to the, how many times did we bunny hop? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it would be times 10 to the 6th. Positive 6 because the number was greater than 1. So that's your answer with proper rounding. So that answer is B. C. 28.0 divided by... 13.483. Once again, I'm going to do the math, put the whole number in, and then we will round appropriately. So 28 divided by 13.483. I get a big number, so I'm going to cut it off after some decimals. So I get 2.076689, let's just say. But now we have to figure out how many sig figs we have. So this is division, which is the same rules as multiplication. So how many sig figs are in 28.0? Well, these two count because they're non-zeros. And this zero is a trailing zero. And you guys should know that trailing zeros only count after the decimal. So, sorry, trailing zeros only count if you see a decimal. And you definitely see a decimal here. So this should be 3 sig fig. So I'm going to put the number three up top here. And how many were at the bottom? Well, they're all non-zero, so they all count. So there's five here. So five versus three, my answer should have three sig figs. So now let's round appropriately. I'm taking the two, the zero and the seven, but the next number is going to tell me whether I round up or keep it. Six is five and above, so it would turn into a eight. So it's now 2.08, and that's the final answer. For C, I don't have to put in scientific notation because it's just 2.08, so this checks out. Next one, 8,119 times, oh geez, point. How many zeros is that? It looks like four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, three, okay. Still, we're in multiplication realm, so with multiplying and dividing, let's just do the math, write it down, and then we will round appropriately. So 8119 times point one two three four twenty three. So that was four zeros and 23, and you get 0 0.186737. So let's count the sig figs now. So for the first number, they're all non-zeros, so they all are significant. So I have four here. And for the next one, remember, these zeros do not count because these are your leading zeros. And leading zeros never count. 
So the two and the three are the only ones that count. So there's two sig figs here. So four versus a two, you take the least total. So this answer should be cut to two sig figs. So let's see. I don't care about this zero in the front because leading zeros are never significant. So it would be one eight and the next number will tell you if you have to round up or keep the same. Six is five and above, so this not this eight would turn into a nine. So it would be zero point one nine. And that's two sig figs. Box that answer off. That one's good. I don't have to put that one scientific notation because it's just point 19, so it doesn't matter. Okay, now for E, this one is my first addition and subtraction realm one. So it's purely all addition. So with these, the easiest way to learn how to do it is you can line them up. So there's a couple of different ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line them up based on their placement. So if I say 14.98, this is the tenths place and this is the hundredths place, right? So my next number ends with a zero. That's the ones place. So I'll put my zero here. Four, three, seven, two. You see that? There's no decimal for this number. So that's why I lined it up with this. And then the next one. The ones place is the four, so that's here. And then I got an eight here, decimal, and then if I trail this five, nine, three. And I'm adding all of these up. So now what I will do is I will add them all together, get one answer, and then we will round appropriately. So 14.98. Plus two seven three four zero. Fourteen point nine eight plus two seven three four zero plus eighty four point seven five nine three. My answer. Ooh, sorry about that. My answer I get is twenty seven four three nine point seven three nine three. Now, how to round addition and subtraction. It's the least number of sig figs after the decimal. So that's why we like to put the placeholder of these are starting after the decimal. You see how the decimal was here and here? So we're only working from here on to the right of the decimal, after the decimal. So how many sig figs were to the right of the decimal for this number right here? Well, it was just the 9 and the 8. So there's two sig figs after the decimal. How many sig figs after the decimal for this one? There was literally none, right? There was no decimal, so there's no sig figs after the decimal. So this one is 0. And how many sig figs for this one after the decimal? The 7, 5, 9, and 3. So this one is 4. But you take the least number. So out of 2, 0, and 4, the least is zero after the decimal. So your answer should have no sig figs after the decimal. So that means that we end here, right? The nine. We can't go after, but the next number will tell us if we can round. And this is a seven, so the nine technically rounds to a what? Nine will round to a ten. So it leaves a zero here, but you have a one that's going into the tens place. So you have to add that up. So it wouldn't be 39, it would turn into 40. So let me write that over here. It would be 27440. And that's it. No sig figs after the decimal because the lowest was this zero number here. Okay, so let's, last one, let's try F. So we can line it up if you want, 42.7. Plus, now it looks like I have 0.259 and a 0. So let's see. How many sig figs are to the right of the decimal for this one? Here's the decimal. There's only one here. How many sig figs are to the right of the decimal? There's three here, the 2, 5, and the 9. So there's three here. So when I get my answer, my answer should only have one sig fig after the decimal. 
because that's the lowest number. Now let me just plug this into the calculator. So 42.7 plus 0.259. The total answer that you get is 42.959, but your answer should only have one after the decimal. So here's my decimal. I should only have one after the decimal, the nine, but I gotta look and it's a five. So that brings the nine up to a 10, but there's two numbers in 10. So the zero goes here and the one carries over. So it's a one plus two, which would be three. So it'd be four, three point zero. And that's the one sig fig after the decimal. That zero is a leading, sorry, that zero is a trailing zero, and trailing zeros only count if there is a decimal, and there it is. Okay, guys, hope this helped. Hope you guys know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide sig figs using the rules. Um, if this helped you, click that subscribe button. That would help us out a lot, and um, I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I will see you guys all in the next question. Happy studying. See you later.